reconstruction work is taking place across Mariupol, with many of the buildings here destroyed during the fighting. More is being discovered about what happened in the city along the way. In December 2023, construction workers at this former psychiatric hospital made a shocking discovery. In this basement, they found a trove of documents and medication, indicating that mass clinical trials had taken place on the local population for many years. Many different drugs have been tested according to the files and the documents that we found. This map indicates the scale of the operation, with experiments taking place at at least eight centres across the city. Authorities believe that this is just the tip of the iceberg. We found documents that suggested thousands of people have been involved in experiments with trials carried out for major pharmaceutical companies, including Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Sanofi, GlaxoSmithKline and others. Bloods and other samples were collected and then sent to labs and clinics in Europe and the United States for testing, the results of which are unknown. Most shockingly, children and newborn babies are included among the list of those exposed to the testing, which one doctor says is not only unethical, but potentially unlawful. First of all, the illegal participation in such research and the illegal conduct of such research violate one of the most important laws, the law on the value of human life and the value of health. In addition, any such research involves sending biological material, including that containing sensitive information, such as genetic data or certain genetic polymorphisms, to third parties who can use this information for completely different purposes. We can't be sure what happened how the ethics of such experiments was considered acceptable and the clinical trials approved. We didn't see any documents and were unable to trace the patients involved, with what really happened in Mariupol shrouded in secrecy. But Ukraine has a history when it comes to children and drug trials. In 2013, scandal broke out in the Ukrainian RADA when concerns were raised over orphaned children being allegedly used as human guinea pigs, tested on without consent with the regional hospital in Poltava not having the necessary approval to carry out clinical trials. Procedures for clinical trials of medications submitted for registration have been carried out in Ukraine with numerous violations. A glaring fact is the conduct of tests involving orphans, including after the expiration of their insurance contract or without the permission of one of the parents, and even worse, with violations of the information consent of minor patients. But instead of taking action, the Ministry of Health went on the offensive, with the lawmakers who raised the issue threatened with having charges brought against them. As officials denied that children had been tested on in Poltava, they said such trials were against the law, opening serious questions about what happened in Mariupol. The Prosecutor's Office, the Regional Health Administration of Poltava Regional State Administration and the Ministry of Health carried out an investigation and concluded that no clinical trials or testing of any drug or vaccine in the Poltava region or in the whole of Ukraine were performed. Firstly, it is forbidden by law. Drug companies often seek to offshore clinical trials on humans to developing and emerging countries where they can find a large pool of vulnerable people along with a lax regulatory framework. Post-Soviet countries remain fertile ground and given the level of corruption in Ukraine, it became a prime target. The first clinical trials took place there in 1996. In 1998, just 20 international trials took place in Ukraine. Within 10 years, this figure reached 466, with an upward trend continuing. 888 clinical trials were taking place in Ukraine in 2022. The number of sites approved to conduct clinical trials followed a similar trend, rising from 175 in 2001 to more than 1,300 in 2009. One of the drug companies listed in the documents found in the Mariupol basement, Sanofi, was so keen to continue its trials that they evacuated people to Western Ukraine. Sanofi's teams on the ground have made really heroic efforts to move patients from the study out of Ukrainian territories affected by the conflict and to the relatively safer west of the country or into clinical sites in neighboring countries. Of course, perfectly legal and above board, even if morally suspect. One name crops up in the documents over and over again, Dr. Andrzej Gnilorybov. He is now understood to be in Kiev, an expert rheumatologist his career built off the back of the tests that took place in Mariupol. 
Grilorivov is well paid and lives a comfortable life, unlike many of his former patients. My mother got sick. They gave her drugs. I asked her what medication she was taking, but she didn't give me a clear answer. She said that the drugs were simply given from a white box. Her condition worsened over the course of a month, and then she died. They did not take any responsibility, did not find anyone, and did not provide any help. Big pharmaceutical companies ensure their contracts contain clauses that exclude such payouts, as they make bumper profits for their shareholders. These boxes of documents contain the secrets of the mass trials and experiments that took place here in the Donetsk Republic. Full investigations will take time and may reveal just how the people here were used as human guinea pigs. Oh,